Hello everyone and welcome to Thailand Unplugged. Let's have a preview of some of the latest news we've got coming up today. Well, they finally caught the Red Bull Air, the one that was drunk and ran into a motorbike cop and killed him in Bangkok. They dropped all the charges after six years of not being able to get him to go to court. China says UK citizenship pathway for Hong Kong residents violates international law. Thailand's visa amnesty extended for foreigners. An idea floating around in Thailand, foreign inmates should teach English to prisoners. Hello, I'm Stephen Clark, bringing the news from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those and many other stories all coming up. Bangkok, Thailand. Charges have been dropped against the heir to the Red Bull energy drink empire. Voriat Yavitnya, relating to the death of a Thai policeman in 2012, Thai police said. Colonel Sampan Long Song Jackal of the Royal Thai Police said, We were informed by the Office of Attorney General about their final decision not to indicate Mr. Voriat Yavitnya about the decision and the withdrawal of arrest warrants. A letter sent to Voriat Yavitnya at his home in Bangkok by Tong Law Police Station, Officer of Attorney General have decided to acquit Mr. Voriat Yavitnya on all charges nationally. Police Commissioner has not objected to the decision and we have proceeded to revoke arrest warrants. The document did not elaborate. Voriat Yavitnya, 28, was behind the wheel of his Ferrari in September the 3rd, 2012 when it collided with an on-duty policeman on a motorbike in downtown Bangkok, leading to the death of the police officer. Voriat Yavitnya was subsequently charged with drink driving, negligent death and committing a hit and run. So there you go. Voriat Yavitnya, or the boss as he likes to be called, will be free with no charges. That's Thai justice, Thai style. I'm very sure the Thai nationals are going to love this one. Well there you go the boss, you're free now. You can jump in your car and go for a bit of a spin and celebrate through the streets of Bangkok. A new British policy allowing Hong Kong residents to claim British citizenship is a violation of international law and interferes with China's internal affairs, Chinese ambassador in London said. British Interior Minister Priti Patel said on Wednesday that Hong Kong people with British national overseas visas would be able to apply for citizenship starting from January 2021. Britain had made that decision despite opposition from Beijing and China that they would respond strongly if it was not reversed, the Chinese ambassador said in a statement. The move severely violates Britain's own commitment, seriously interfered with the internal affairs of China and seriously violated international law and the basic norms of international relations, it said. London's decision, which would allow nearly 3 million Hong Kong residents to settle in Britain, came after Beijing imposed a national security law on the former British colony that democracy activists said would end the freedom promised in 1997 when the territory was returned to Chinese rule. China will make a forceful counterattack to the UK's wrong actions, said Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Winbin at a daily news conference. China urged the UK to give up its fantasies of continual colonial influence in Hong Kong and immediately correct its mistake, he said. Britain says the new laws imposed on Hong Kong preaches the terms of the handover treaty agreed in 1984. China accused Britain of interfering in Hong Kong the Chinese side urged the British side to recognise the reality that Hong Kong has returned to China, to look at that Hong Kong national security law objectively and immediately correct its mistake, the embassy said. Can you honestly believe anybody with any brains would make those statements? When is the Chinese Communist Party going to learn to stop making threats to the West? You broke your promise to leave Hong Kong alone.
Thailand, a visa amnesty extension for foreigners. The Thai cabinet has extended the visa amnesty for foreigners so they can remain in Thailand during the Chinese coronavirus global pandemic. This is the second extension to the visa amnesty and will be a huge relief for tens of thousands of people who have been in visa limbo. Some without many other options other than staying in Thailand whilst international flights remain limited. This will be a big relief for tourists in Thailand, trapped there because of the Chinese coronavirus. Government spokeswoman Tricery Thai Saranakal says that the automatic visa extension will now be enforced until September the 26th. As rumoured, mandatory 90-day reports for residents, foreigners with ongoing visa will be suspended until September the 26th. Well, that's great news. Sitting in immigration for hours, waiting to do a 90-day report. At this stage, there's been no additional paperwork required by the applicants. And we all know how Thailand loves its paperwork. The announcement will assist tourists and visitors who found themselves stranded in Thailand due to travel restrictions, as well as providing extra time for people to make arrangements and take advantage of repatriation flights or opportunities to fly home. Justice Minister Samsak Septosin suggested that the Correction Department should consider using foreign inmates to teach English to fellow prisoners to supplement their occupational training. Mr Samsak floated the idea on Monday when he and Labor Minister signed an agreement to step up cooperation between Justice and Labor Ministers to address the problem of ex convicts employment. The Labor Minister said that under the agreement, the Employees and Skill Developments Department of the Labor Ministry will provide training courses in various occupations for inmates before they are released and issue them with certificates to convince businesses operating to hire them. The Labor Minister is also looking for employers, both inside and outside the country, to accept trained inmates who suit their requirements, he said. The two ministers are already cooperating to provide skill training for inmates. In 2019, 8,084 inmates received occupational training and 70 to 80 percent of them found jobs after release. In 2020, the two ministers aimed to train 1,840 inmates for jobs that are in demand, such as construction workers, carpenters and electricians. Mr. Samsak said Corrections Department is responsible for selecting inmates for training. Between 20,000 to 30,000 inmates have been targeted. Those seeking jobs abroad need to learn English or other languages used in countries where jobs are available, he said. As there are now about 2,000 foreign inmates in prisons, the Corrections Department has been assigned to select some of them with potential to teach English to other inmates. This could be a major step forward for prisoners and youth in correction programs to be able to return to society with greater job opportunities, Mr Samsak said. Last, Qantas 747 flight draws a kangaroo logo in the sky to mark its final voyage. The Qantas Boeing 747 has taken to the skies for the last time, marking its final journey by drawing the airline's famous kangaroo logo in the sky. The design could be seen in flight radar maps as the aircraft, affectionately known as the Queen of the Skies, flew out of Sydney for the last time. The aircraft has been part of Qantas fleet for 50 years, with the courier acquiring its first jumbo in 1971, thereby opening up the world to millions of Australian travellers. Three years later, the 747 was used to rescue nearly 700 people from the devastation of Cyclone Tracy in the Northern Territory capital of Darwin. By 1979, Qantas was the first airline running an all Boeing 747 fleet. More recently, the aircraft was put to work ferrying hundreds of stranded 
evacuated Australians out of China when the Chinese coronavirus erupted. The aircraft will now be retired to California Mojave Desert, where it will be joined with other planes that are stripped for parts in what is known as the aircraft graveyard. It's the end of an era. Everybody in the world, everybody in Australia, know the shape of the 747. It's like aeroplane jelly and Vegemite. It's always been there. We don't know life without the 747. It's hard to overstate the impact the 747 had on aviation and a country as far away as Australia. It replaced the 707, which was a huge leap forward in itself, but didn't have the sheer size and scale to lower airfares the way the 747 did. Time has overtaken the 747, and we now have much more fuel-efficient aircraft with an even better range in our fleet, which is the 787 Dreamliner that was used in Perth to London, and hopefully before too long, the Airbus A350 for our Project Sunrise flight non-stop to New York and London. The retirement of the 747 from the Qantas fleet comes as British Airways that it too is scraping the iconic jumbo. A British Airways spokesman added that while this was always the plan, the shutdown in world travel due to the Chinese coronavirus has brought it forward a number of years. We are proposing to retire our entire 747 fleet with immediate effect. It is unlikely our magnificent Queen of the Skies will ever operate commercial services to British Airways again due to the downturn in travel caused by the Chinese coronavirus global pandemic. It is understood there are now fewer than 100 Boeing 747 aircraft still operating around the world. And it will be very sad to see them all go. Countries alerted on Washington's meddling in the South China Sea. Beijing has called on countries to remain vigilant to the Washington's tendency toward militarizing in the South China Sea, jointly safeguard regional peace and stability. State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi, the United States continues to disturb tranquility in the South China Sea by sending advanced warships and aircraft to flex its muscles there, Wang said. On Monday, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompei, Beijing's claim to offshore resources across most of the South China Sea are completely unlawful. The statement violates Washington's commitment not to take sides in territorial disputes in the South China Sea, deliberately sowed discord between China and members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and attempted to create conflict between regional nationals and undermine regional stability, Wang said. Such practices of backtracking will only harm the credibility of the US, he said. China will continue to work with the Philippines and other countries in the region to deal with maritime issues through dialogue and consultation and conclude a code of conduct in the South China Sea at an early date, Wang said. Dealing with the South China Sea issues requires us to look forward together instead of going back to past, Wang told his Filipino counterpart. Luxon said that bilateral maritime disputes should not and will not affect the friendship between the Philippines and China. The Philippines would like to resolve disputes relating to the South China Sea through friendly bilateral negotiations and promote maritime cooperation with China, he said. In response to Pompey's remark, Foreign Minister spokesman Zhao Lajing said on Thursday that Beijing has never strived to build a maritime empire in the South China Sea, and he urged Washington to stop its attempt to disrupt, sabotage regional peace and stability. Pompey said in his statement that Beijing has offered no coherent legal basis for its Nine Dash Line claim in the South China Sea. Since formally announcing it in 2009, the Arbitrational Tribunal decision on the South China Sea in 2016 is final, legally binding on China and the Philippines. The Chinese government published a location map of the South China Sea Islands on which the interrupted lines are marked in 1948, Zhao said at a daily news briefing. The lines have not been questioned by any country for a very long time, Zhao said, adding that China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights and interests in the South China Sea have sufficient historical and legal basis and are consistent with relevant international laws and international practice. He refuted Pompey's remarks about the arbitration case. 
saying that China will not accept abuse of international maritime law by the U.S. by hyping the South China Sea abattoir case to serve its political purposes. The U.S. is a troublemaker, undermining peace and stability in the South China Sea region, which is obvious to the international community, he said. We urge the U.S. to stop making trouble on the South China Sea issue. China will continue to safeguard its sovereignty and security in accordance with the laws and maritime friendly cooperation with regional countries, he said. Also on Tuesday, Zhao announced that China will impose sanctions on contractor Lockheed Martin Corporation for its involvement in the latest U.S. arms sales to Taiwan. The company is the main contractor for a 620 million upgrade package for Taiwan's Patriot surface-to-air missile, which was approved by the U.S. last week. These sanctions are necessary measures to safeguard national interest, Zhao said, calling on the U.S. to end its military ties with Taiwan and stop selling weapons to the island in order to avoid further harming China-U.S. ties and cross-strait stability. Zhao Fengelin, a spokeswoman for the State Council Taiwan Affairs Office, said that the Democratic Progressive Party authorities' efforts to seek independence are due to fail, and these moves will only undermine peace and stability across the Taiwan Straits and bring disaster for the people on the island.